Hear me, grave fathers, noble tribunes, stay. For pity of mine age, whose youth was spent in dangerous wars, whilst you slept. For all my blood in Rome's great quarrel shed, for all the frosty nights that I have watched, and for these bitter tears, which now you see, filling the aged wrinkles in my cheeks. Be pitiful to my condemned sons, whose souls are not as corrupted as tis thought. For two and twenty sons I never wept, because they died in honor's lofty bed. For these, these tribunes in the dust I write, my heart's deep languor and my soul's sad tears. Let my tears stanch the earth's dry appetite. My son's sweet blood will make it shame and blush. O oh, earth, I will befriend thee with more rain that shall distill from these two ancient urns. Then youthful April shall with all his showers. In summer's drought I'll drop upon thee still. In winter, with warm tears, I'll melt the snow and keep eternal springtime on thy face, so thou refuse to drink my dear son's blood. Oh, reverend tribunes, O oh, gentle aged men, unbind my sons, reverse the doom of death, and let me say that never wept before, my tears are now prevailing orators. Oh, noble father, you lament in vain. The tribunes hear you not. No man is by, and you recount your sorrows to a stone. Ah, Lucius, for thy brothers let me plead. Grave tribunes, once more I entreat of you. My gracious lord, no one hears you speak. Why, tis no matter, man. If they did hear, they would not mark me. Or if they did mark, they would not pity me. Yet plead I must. Therefore I tell my sorrows to the stones, who, though they cannot answer my distress, yet in some sort they are better than the tribunes, for that they will not intercept my tale. When I do weep, they humbly at my feet receive my tears and seem to weep with me. And were they but a tyrant in grave weeds, Rome could afford no tribune like to these. A stone is soft as wax. Tribunes much more hard than stones. A stone is silent and offendeth not, and tribunes with their tongues do men to death. But wherefore standest thou with thy weapon drawn? To rescue my two brothers from their death, for which attempt the judges have pronounced my everlasting doom of banishment. O oh, happy man that they have befriended thee, why, foolish Lucius, dost thou not perceive that Rome is but a wilderness of tigers? Tigers must pray, and Rome affords no prey but me and mine. How happy thou art, then, from these devourers to be banished. But who comes with our brother Marcus here? Titus, prepare thy aged eyes to weep, or if not so, thy noble heart to break. I bring consuming sorrow with thine age. Will it consume me? Let me see it, then. This was thy daughter, where Marcus so she is. I, this object kills me. Faint-hearted boy, arise and look on her. Speak, Lavinia, what cursed hand have made thou handless in thy father's sight? What fool have added water to the sea or brought a faggot to bright burning Troy? My grief was at the height before thou camest, and now like Nihilus it disdaineth bounds. Give me a sword. I'll chop off my hands, too, for they have fought for Rome and all in vain, and they have nursed this woe in feeding life, in bootless prayer have they been held up, and they have served me in effectless use. Now all the service I require of them is that the one will help to cut the other. Tis well, Lavinia, that thou hast no hands, for hands to do Rome's service are but vain. Speak, gentle sister, who hath martyred thee? Oh, that delightful engine of her thoughts, that 
blabbed them with such pleasing eloquence is torn forth from that pretty hollow cage where, like a sweet and melodious bird, it sung sweet varied notes, enchanting every ear. Oh, say thou for her, who hath done this deed? Oh, thus I found her, straying in the park, seeking to hide herself as doth the deer that hath received some unrecurring wound. It was my deer, and he that wounded her hath hurt me more than had he killed me dead. For now I stand as one upon a rock environed with the wilderness of sea who marks the waxing tide grow wave by wave, expecting ever when some envious surge will in his brinish bowels swallow him. This way to death my wretched sons are gone. Here stand my other son, a banished man, and here my brother weeping at my woes. But that which gives my soul the greatest Spurn is dear Lavinia, dearer than my soul. Had I but seen thy picture in this plight, it would have maddened me. What should I do now I behold thy lively body so? <laughs> Thou hast no hands to wipe away thy tears, nor tongue to tell me who hath martyred thee. Thy husband is dead, and for his death thy brothers are condemned, and dead by this. <sighs> look, Marcus, ah, son Lucius, look on her. When I did name her brothers, then fresh tears stood on her cheeks, as doth the honeydew upon the gathered lily almost withered. Perchance she weeps because they killed her husband, perchance because she knows them innocent. If they did kill thy husband, then be joyful, because the law hath taken revenge on them. No, no, they would not do so foul a deed. Witness the sorrow that their sister makes. Gentle Lavinia, let me kiss thy lips, or make some sign how I may do thee ease. Shall thy good uncle, and thy brother Lucius, and thou and I, sit round about some fountain, looking all downwards to behold our cheeks, how they are stained as meadows, yet not dry, with the miry slime left on them by a flood? On at the fountain shall we gaze so long that the fresh taste be taken from its clearness and made a brine pit with our bitter tears? Or shall we cut our hands away like thine? Or shall we bite our tongues and in dumb show pass the remainder of our hateful days? What shall we do? Shall we that have our tongues plot some dish advance to misery to make us wondered at in time to come? Sweet father, cease your tears, for in your grief see how my wretched sister sobs and weeps. <laughs> Patience, dear niece. Good Titus, dry thine eyes. Oh, Marcus. Marcus, brother, well I wot thou napkin canst drink up no tear of mine, since thou, poor man, hast drowned it with thine own. <laughs> oh, my Lavinia, let me dry thy cheeks. <laughs> Mark, Marcus, Mark, I understand her signs. Had she a tongue to speak now, would she say that to her brother, which I said to thee, his napkin with his true tears all bewept can do no service on her sorrowful cheeks. Oh, what a sympathy of woe is this, as far from help as limbo is from bliss. Titus Andronicus, my lord, the emperor sends thee his word that if thou love thy sons, let Marcus Lucius or thyself, old Titus, or any one of you, chop off your hand, and send it to the king. He, for the same, will send thee hither both thy sons alive, and that shall be the ransom for their faults. Oh, gracious emperor, oh, gentle Aaron, did ever raven sing so like a lark that gives these sweet tidings of the sun's uprise? With all my heart, I'll send the emperor my hand. Good Aaron, would thou 
help to chop it off? Stay, father, for that noble hand of thine that hath thrown down so many enemies shall not be sent. My hand will serve the turn. My youth can better spare my blood than you, and therefore mine shall save my brother's lives. Which of your hands hath not defended Rome, and feared aloft the bloody battle axe, writing destruction on the enemy's castle? Oh, none of both but are of highest desert. My hand hath been but idle. Let it serve to ransom my two nephews from their death. Then have I kept it to a worthy end. Nay, come, agree whose hand shall go along for fear they die before their pardon come. My hand shall go. By heaven, it shall not go. <coughs> Sirs! Strive no more. Such withered herbs as these are meat for plucking up, and therefore mine. Sweet father, if I shall be thought thy son, let me redeem my brothers both from death. And for our father's sake and mother's care, now let me show a brother's love to thee. Agree between you, I will spare my hand. Then I'll go fetch an axe. But I will use the axe. Come hither, Aaron. I'll deceive them both. Lend me thy hand, and I will give thee mine. If that be called deceit, I will be honest. And never whilst I live deceive men so. But I'll deceive you in another sort. And that you will say, ere half an hour pass. Cut off Titus's hand. Now say your strife, what shall be is dispatched. Good Aaron, give his majesty thy hand. Tell it him it was a hand that warded him from thousand dangers. Bid him bury it more half it merited than let it have. As for my sons, say I account of them, as jewels purchased at an easy price, and yet dear too, because I bought mine own. I go, Andronicus. And for thy hand, look by and by to have thy sons with thee. Their heads, I mean. Oh, how this villainy doth fat me with the very thoughts of it. Let fools do good, and fair men call for grace. Aaron will have his soul black like his face. Oh, here I lift this one hand up to heaven, and bow this feeble ruin to the earth. If any power pities wretched tears, to that I call. What? Will thou kneel with me? Do then, dear heart, for heaven shall hear our prayers, or with our sighs will breathe the welkin din, and stain the sun with fog, sometime clouds, and do they hug him in their melting bosoms? O oh, brother, speak with possibilities, and do not break into these deep extremes. Is not my sorrow deep, having no bottom? then be my passions bottomless with them. But yet let reason govern thy lament. If there were reason for these miseries, then into limits I could bind my woes. When heaven doth weep, doth not the earth o'erflow? If the winds rage, doth not the sea wax mad, threatening the welkin with his big swollen face? And wilt thou have a reason for this coil? I am the sea. Hark how her sighs do blow. She is the weeping welkin, I the earth. Then must my sea be moved with her sighs. Then must my earth with her continual tears become a deluge, o'erflowed and drowned. For why my bowels cannot hide her woes, but like a drunkard I must vomit them. Then give me leave, for losers will have leave to ease their stomachs with their bitter tongues. What, the Andronicus? The life thou repaid for that good hand thou sentest the emperor. Here are thy heads of thy two noble sons, and here's thy hand in scorn to thee sent back. Thy grief their sports, thy resolution mocked. That woe is me to think upon thy woes, more than remembrance of my father's death. Now let hot Edna cool in Sicily 
and be my heart in ever burning hell. These miseries are more than may be borne. To weep with them that weep doth ease some deal, but sorrow flouted is as double death. Uh, that this sight should make so deep a wound, and yet detested life do not shrink thereat, that that should let life bear his name, where life hath no more interest but to breathe. Alas, poor heart, that kiss is comfortless as frozen water to a starved snake. When will this fearful slumber have an end? Now farewell, flattery. Die, Andronicus, thou dost not slumber. See thy two sons' heads, thy warlike hand, thy mangled daughter here, thy... Other banished son with this dear sight struck pale and bloodless? And thy brother, I, even like a stony image, cold and numb. And now no more will I control thy grief, rend off thy silver hair, thy other hand gnawing with thy teeth, and be this dismal sight the closing of our most wretched eyes. Now is the time to storm. Why art thou still? <laughs> Why dost thou laugh? If it's not with this hour. Why, I have not another tear to shed. Besides, this sorrow is an enemy, uh, and would usurp upon my watery eye and make them blind with tributary tears. And then which way shall I find revenge's cave? For these two heads seem to speak to me and threat me. I shall never come to bliss till all these mischiefs be returned again even in their throats that have committed them. Come, let me see what task I have to do. You heavy people, circle me about, that I may turn to each of you and swear unto my soul to right your wrong. And thou is made. Come, come together, brother. Take a head. And in this hand, the other I will bear. Lavinia, thou shall be employed these arms. Bear thou my hand, sweet wrench between your teeth. As for thee, boy, go get thee from my sight. Thou art in exile, and thou must not stay. Hie to the Goths and raise an army there, and if you love me, as I think you do, let's kiss and part, for we have much to do. Mm. Hmm. Farewell, Adronicus, my noble father, the wofulest man that ever lived in Rome. And farewell, proud Rome, to Lucius come again. He leaves his pledges dearer than his life. Farewell, Lavinia, my noble sister. Oh, would thou wert as thou tofore hast been. <laughs> But now, nor Lucius nor Lavinia lives, but in oblivion and hateful griefs. If Lucius live, he will requite your wrongs, and make proud Saturnine and his empress beg at the gates like Tarkin and his queen. And now will I to the Goths and raise a power to be revenged on Rome and Saturnine.